Hey, it's Lon Seidman and the folks from Rocket Store sent us their latest Thunderbolt 2 dock to take a look at. This is called the 6351A. And like all the other Thunderbolt docks we've looked at, it's got a pretty simple concept. You plug Thunderbolt in over here and you get all of these ports over here. And you have a second Thunderbolt port to pass through to other devices or to pass video onto a monitor. And uh, this is a Thunderbolt 2 adapter. So it is compatible with the prior Thunderbolt version, Thunderbolt 1, uh, but it'll work on all the newer computers and adapter cards that support the faster Thunderbolt 2 standards. So Thunderbolt 1 has a maximum bandwidth of 10 gigabits per second. This has a maximum potential of 20 gigabits per second although the devices we're going to plug into this thing to test won't get anywhere near that speed and also the controllers on board uh, aren't going to get close to that either but if you are doing a lot of data throughput in and out especially through that other Thunderbolt adapter uh, this uh, extra bandwidth will be helpful what's unique about this one is that it has an eSATA port on board so you can uh, basically directly connect a, a SATA device to this Thunderbolt dock which I found to be pretty useful it's got gigabit ethernet it has a headphone adapter and a microphone jack as well so it has uh, audio pass through and it has two USB 3.0 ports that are each on their own discrete controller so you don't have the bandwidth being shared between these two ports these are uh, connected to uh, distinct controllers so you should get a little bit more performance out of each one so you can plug you know USB hub into one and, and the other and uh, have kind of like basically two uh, distinct USB adapters to uh, use for bandwidth so uh, that's the hardware what we're going to do is put this thing through its paces we're going to take a look at uh, the maximum eSATA transfer speed they also sent us along some uh, docks to use to plug into uh, the dock here so we can get that eSATA thing tested and we'll also look at that USB 3.0 speed and then we'll see how it does doing multiple things at the same time to see uh, if it can maintain the kind of bandwidth that we want. Now the testing I'm going to do is on a, a older MacBook Pro Retina so I only have the Thunderbolt 1 the 10 gigabit connection but uh, the kind of test we're doing won't even get close to even straining that so let's take a look at some benchmarks. All right, for our first test, we're going to take a look at the eSATA performance using a SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD. This is the fastest drive in my arsenal. Uh, we should see about a 4 gigabit per second transfer rate, especially on the read side, uh, if this does indeed have the 6 gigabit SATA controller that is advertised on the box. So let's see uh, how our Black Magic benchmark is doing with it. And we're getting, uh, unfortunately, on the reads about 392 megabytes per second. Now, that's pretty darn fast, but it is only about 3.1 gigabits per second. So we're not getting uh, that full six, at least close to that full speed that the drive can do. We could probably squeeze another uh, gigabit out of this drive at least, and uh, we're just not seeing it on there. But uh, one thing that was uh, comforting to see is that when I start running my Ethernet test at the same time, I'm getting the performance I would expect. So I'm getting about 800 megabits per second uh, to my MacBook Air upstairs uh, while this thing is pushing the uh, three gigabits per second through the device. So I think we're seeing that uh, the Thunderbolt controller is certainly capable, uh, but the SATA controller on board is a little bit limited. Now, this is fast. Don't get me wrong. If you plug an eSATA drive into this device, you're going to get uh, very nice speed, pretty much uh, on par with what you would see with most uh, desktop controllers, not all, uh, but most. But it could go faster uh, and it doesn't. So uh, if you're looking for the utmost performance out of your SATA device, this won't provide it, but it's certainly fast enough for most people's use. All right, now we're going to take a look at USB 3 speed. And before I plug this device into here, I am going to plug the USB 3 directly into my Mac uh, to get a sense as to how fast it'll go. Now, what was interesting is look how fast this is running uh, on my Mac's internal USB 3 controller. We're getting uh, better speeds out of the USB 3 than we were getting out of the Thunderbolt and eSATA. So uh, we're pushing like 3.4 gigabits per second here uh, on this test, which was actually quite surprising. So uh, now what we're going to do is take uh, the USB 3 out of the Mac, plug it into the dock, and see how it performs on there. Okay, now we are plugged into the dock and we're seeing less speed. In fact, we're seeing uh, 360 megabytes per second on the right side and about 365 megabytes per second on the read side. So uh, this tells me again that we're kind of limited by the speed of the controllers on board. These are still great speeds and I think you're going to uh, you know, not really notice a lot of the speed difference in a real world kind of use, but uh, there is a kind of a bottleneck with the controllers that are built into this device. And just for the heck of it, we'll continue running that benchmark on the USB 3 while copying a huge file over eSATA. And as you can see, uh, we're copying a 12 gig file right now, and we're seeing no impact of performance on the USB. So again, we're not seeing any real bottleneck in the Thunderbolt. It's probably just the individual controllers on each component. 
Now, I did plug some headphones into the dock to see how it sounded, and it sounds okay. It's not audiophile quality. In fact, it sounds about the same as all the other Thunderbolt docks that I've looked at, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're all running the same chipset. Uh, your Mac or PC will likely sound better for music, but if you're doing Skype calls and that sort of thing, I think this will sound just fine. What's nice about these docks is that you can plug all this stuff into them and plug in one cable into your computer, and you've got them all uh, lit up and ready to go. So when I go to work in the morning, I have a dock at the office, uh, plug in my Thunderbolt cable and all of my stuff, Gigabit Ethernet, Internet display, everything just comes right up, and I'm ready to get to work without having to plug in and look for cables and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, pretty useful there. This is a good dock. It's certainly limited a little bit by uh, its individual component controllers. So, we saw with the eSATA and the USB that um, you know, we have devices that can perform faster, uh, but they're kind of hitting the limit of what the controllers built into this uh, can do. And this is not unique to this product. Every one of these Thunderbolt docks I've tried have the same kinds of issues. Uh, what is unique about this one is that it has an eSATA port on the back, which I don't think I've seen on other Thunderbolt docks. So, that's a really good thing to have. Uh, the performance isn't bad. It could be a little bit faster, but it's certainly usable. And we also saw that uh, you know, really taxing out one of those components doesn't impact the other one. So I think there's plenty of bandwidth on the wire here uh, to get everything working. And you're at uh, Thunderbolt 2 uh, bandwidth. So if you have other devices that you're plugging in in a chain, I don't think this will limit uh, your available uh, bandwidth for other high-speed devices plugged into your Mac or PC. This is Lon Seidman, and thanks for watching.